Nice. Get down there. This is an inset or overmount sink and it gets fitted on top of the worktop. So generally after the worktop's been installed. And this is an undermount sink. It gets attached to the bottom of the worktop generally at the same time that the worktop is being installed. Today I am going to show you how I go about preparing a kitchen base unit for an undermount sink to be installed in a quartz worktop. Hiya folks, welcome back to the show. Today I'm going to show you how I go about preparing a kitchen base unit for an undermount sink to be installed because tomorrow we have got the granite people or the, the quartz worktop people are coming out to template up for the worktop going in and the undermount sink needs to be all kind of, not installed, but it needs to be in the right position so that they know where to cut the hole in the quartz. And the worktop people have very clearly said to template your new worktops, please ensure that all existing and temporary tops are removed as well as any appliances, taps, sinks, hobs, etc. before arrival. All undermounted sinks need to be in position and supported. So before I start, I have only installed one undermount sink in my life and it was like 10 years ago. But there seems to be an absolute dire lack of information on the internet about how to do this. So I figured, well, you know, this will kind of get the ball rolling. If nothing else, you can tell us whether or not what I've done is correct and you can correct us in the comments. Anyway, what I've done so far, I've taken the unit out of the kitchen because I need to hack away at it quite a lot. And what I did was I turned the sink upside down and drew around it. And the lips of the undermount sink end up sitting on the edges of the worktop and that's no good. The top of the sink needs to be perfectly flush with the top of the kitchen units. And the other thing you have to consider as well is what happens if the sink gets damaged? How would you ever get the sink back out if you decided to fit it like sandwiched over the top of the edges of, of the units? So that's not really an option. You've got to uh, cut away, either route away or jigsaw the top of the, the unit away so that you can get the sink in from underneath. What I've also had to do is cut away the front edge of this unit as well. So there's very little holding this unit together at the minute. So we need to be a little bit careful until we get to the stage that we've got the support fitted because the support for the sink will add quite a lot of structural strength to the unit. But at the moment, there's only this tiny little bit here, which is probably held in with a single dowel. There's only that and that little back piece there stopping this whole unit from just falling to bits. I've left 25 mil at the front here. There'll be a 20 mil of worktop overhang. So this allows for a minimum of a 40 mil strip at the front. I've cut 20 mil down on both sides and again checked how far the sink's going to sit in this and I've allowed a little bit of wiggle room at the back so that the sink can be shuffled either a little bit forward or a little bit back and I'm going to leave that up to the quartz experts to decide exactly where the sink is going to go because they'll have experience of how much gap you need to leave at the front so that it's not too weak and also how much gap you need to leave at the back so there's enough room for them to cut the tap hole into the quartz. This will make a lot more sense once I get this unit back into the kitchen. So, fingers crossed, and by the way, gloves at this stage because the edge of these are seriously sharp. I'm hoping, obviously the easy thing to do is to drop it in, but you need to make sure that if something goes wrong, you can actually get the sink back out. So uh, that might not be possible. Um, I mean, it's supposed to be designed for one of these units, but uh, well, that's not gonna be. <laughs> Mm, that's definitely not going to work that way. Hmm. I see no way that you could get this out. In the event of it getting damaged, you'd have to cut the front 
you'd have to cut this front little section out and slide it out. Wouldn't be easy because you'd have to like try and cut the silicon from underneath it and whatnot. But uh, as I say, it's supposed to be designed for a 600 unit, but since these lips on the edge overlap the edge of the unit, um, yeah, that's... <laughs> Anyway, I now need to make a support for under this to hold the sink at exactly the right height. Right, complete change of plan. I'm not happy with this at all. Any long-term maintenance on this is going to be an absolute nightmare because if anything gets damaged on the sink, you've got to have some way of being able to get the sink out without having to replace thousands of pounds worth of uh, quartz worktops. So I'm not happy about the fact that it's almost impossible to get this out without buttering the rest of these cabinets. Not only that, but I would have to reposition the hinge for this cabinet as well, because uh, there's no way that you can get the hinge in with that. So I know they say these are designed for 600 cabinets. This has been a bit of a comedy of errors, this sink, because we had a grower one ordered and the grower one was supposed to be in stock and then it wasn't in stock and then we had to get a refund on it because it was going to take like two months for it to arrive. So we then we found this one which was vaguely similar but the quality of it isn't particularly great. As I say we've got this hinge problem and the fact that there's no way of actually getting it out the unit without smashing your worktops off. So now nah, it's going back. I'm not keeping that. So I was debating cutting all of this out of the video, but I figured, you know, you might learn something from this. And as I say, there's very little on YouTube about doing undermount sinks. So a very quick trip to being cute, and we've decided we're not gonna go for a one and a half bowl. We're just gonna go for a single smaller one bowl. We've got a dishwasher. We don't really need the half bowl. The half bowl was a bit of a kind of luxury. And if it's gonna cause a major pain in the neck for the install, it's really not worth it. If you wanted to go for the one and a half bowl, then you would have to uh, reposition the hinge. And you would also have to live with the fact that getting the sink back out at a later date would be really, really quite tricky anyway. So we're gonna go for this instead. That's quite nice. It's just a Cook and Lewis, nothing particularly fancy. Looks quite nice actually. Do the job. It's your usual multilingual instructions that really don't make a whole lot of sense, but uh, either way, it doesn't cover undermounting it for a solid, well, for a, a stone worktop. It only basically tells you how to do it for a wooden worktop. So all of this is effectively useless. But I think the general consensus, speaking to Mrs. Mack, is that we are gonna put it this way around. I mean, it shows it in pictures of it being that way around, but that's going to be a nightmare doing the overflow. And then if you imagine a tap at the back of the overflow there, getting into that, uh, I don't think so. So I think what we'll do is we'll fit it sideways like that. Have the overflow to the right. That makes it nice and easy access. We haven't got the hinge problems anymore and there's plenty of room to get a tap at the back. So all we need to do is build a little shelf to hold it at the right height. It's as simple as that. So because of the angle of the bottom of the sink, it's no use measuring right at the edges as to how high your shelf needs to be. You need to bring it in by whatever thickness your shelf is gonna be. So I'm gonna make this shelf um, I need to allow enough room for the waste cut out and stuff, but it doesn't need to be massive. So I'm going to allow, let's say 65 mil, and that is 180. So we'll put a mark 180 down from the top of the unit, because that's what we want the top of the sink to be flush with. 180. And then we need to decide how far in or out we want the sink to go. So let's have a look. So obviously it's up to you where you want your sink to sit, but just think about long-term maintenance, getting to the overflow, getting to the waste, getting to the pipes at the back, getting your tap in at the back, anything else that's in the cupboard. So I'm gonna have the sink that far right. It just shuffles it right a bit and gets it a little bit more central under the window. And we'll have it 
quite far forward, but that still allows, if you imagine a 20 mil overhang at the front, that allows over 50 mil for the front kind of bead, if that makes sense. Uh, well over 50 mil actually. So that would allow oh, about 70 mil. Plenty room at the back for a tap. So I think that should work pretty well. 45, I'll just mark up where it's going. 45 is there. I'm so annoyed that I've butchered this cabinet for a sink that we haven't even ended up keeping, but such is life. Now, it might seem a little bit overkill, but I'm using solid oak brackets. I've instantly lost my pencil. The reason being is that oak is incredibly hard and it means that I can get away with much, much smaller brackets. But it does unfortunately mean pilot holing, even for self-drilling screws, because oak is seriously hard. I'll come back to what that bit's for. Right, very carefully, because I don't have my gloves on. Pretty good to me. The sink itself isn't particularly straight, like it's got a definite bow in the middle and it eases off towards the edge, but that's fine. Silicon will fill that, but we're perfectly flush in the middle there. Nice and flush and just get the level out. Yeah, perfect. It's literally just touching it in the middle and we haven't got any rocking or anything like that. So we are good. Check for level, perfect, perfect. All good. So what we'll do next, I've put some marks at the front, just with a Sharpie on the top here, cause you'll never see that. And that's just to mark the um, kind of left right position of the sink. And then I've also measured to the center of that because we want the tap to be in the center at the back. And I've put a mark on the wall where we want the tap center to be. So when they come to template the work tops, they know where the tap hole needs to go. Now, one last little job is gonna be to attach a piece of oak along the front here, just to provide a bit of extra support because this is always a weak point on worktops and obviously we've hacked away a lot of the actual unit itself. So it's just gonna strengthen the unit up a little bit as well. So I'm gonna attach that there. Again, with this being oak, I am gonna pilot hole it. With the bluntest drill in the world. And I am going to add just a couple of little brackets under here. They're tiny. No one will ever see them. And it's just for a, a little bit of extra support for the cabinet. There we go, I'm happy with that. Everything is labeled up, ready for the templating being done tomorrow. I've also left the tap out, although I've checked and it's a 34 millimeter hole that that needs. So I've just written it on top of one of the units there. And I've also marked that dotted line is where the tap center needs to be um, horizontally, if you like, or along this way. And it's marked on the wall, just there, tap center. So you kind of, get a vague idea of where that's going and everything's all marked up on here so we know where things are going and I can have that as reference so that once I've done the templating 
I can still put all the plumbing in and everything that's needed for the sink. And then inside the cupboard, everything is absolutely solid. Solid oak shelf. I will actually oil this once the kitchen's all finished because then it'll more or less match in with the uh, pretend oak as well. So it should all look quite nice. But this is absolutely solid. This is very, very strong. It doesn't need anything more than that because most of the weight's going to be taken by the actual worktop itself. But as I say, they do want it to be supported. Plenty room there for putting all the plumbing in, easy to get to the overflow. Disaster averted, jobs are good. Once the worktops are all installed, one of the last things I like to do is just to pop a couple of wedges underneath the sink, between the sink and the shelf. And then I just like to put a clear bead of silicon around the bottom just to hold everything in place and to take a little bit of the weight of the sink, even though the vast majority of the weight is gonna be taken by the worktop itself. So that's the worktops all installed. The worktop fitters are the ones who end up attaching it into the bottom of the worktop itself. I know what you're gonna be asking, why didn't I build some sort of support system that supports it by the edges of the sink rather than underneath the sink? And the main reason is because I'm really viewing this from a long-term maintenance perspective and sinks do get damaged. And if a sink gets damaged, you need to be able to take it out as easily as possible and put a new one in without causing any damage to the actual worktop. And that's really difficult if you put um, top brackets in or if you have the edges of the sink over the edges of your units sometimes it can be almost impossible to get that sink out and that's the reason why we've kind of changed our plan on what we're doing with this one I've said it a million times on this channel but think maintenance at some point you'll have to get that sink out how are you gonna do it the other thing to bear in mind here is that the vast majority of the weight is taken by the silicon that is holding the top edge of the sink onto the bottom of the worktop. The supports that I've installed really are just there to hold it in place while that top layer of silicon goes off. And it's also a bit of a fallback as well. So there's a little bit of bottom support for the sink. But as I say, the vast majority of the support is coming from that silicon at the top. And you will know if you've ever had to try and take an undermount sink out of a solid worktop, you will know how well silicon will hold that in place. You've got to bear in mind as well that any solid worktop, these little thin bits here are your weak points. If something's gonna get broken, it'll be when someone ends up leaning on this too hard or you know, you've know you got a tradesperson comes in and they decide that they're gonna stand on this portion of the sink. I've seen that happen before. So the wider you can make this section, the better. We've ended up with 100 mil at the front and well, almost 100 mil at the back. So that's pretty good. It's very, very unlikely that this is gonna get broken. Plus we've got that oak support underneath as well. So we're in a good place with this, but just be careful if you end up using a bigger sink and you end up with a really thin strip at the front, that will be a weak point that will end up getting broken at some point if you're not careful. Anyway, this worktop has literally only just been installed, so I'm not touching it. We need to let all the glues and silicons and everything uh, fully go off and cure. So yeah, just leave it 24 hours before going on to the next stage, which will be putting the tap in, uh, putting all the waste pipe work in and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, folks, I think that's enough spoilers for one day for what this kitchen's gonna end up looking like. Do hit subscribe and you'll get to see the final product once we've done all the remaining little jobs. Well, I'm saying little jobs. We've got all the decoration to do, taps, plumbing, all the nice fun jobs, but you'll get to see the whole kitchen done on the channel at some point. So do hit subscribe and you can see that. And you'll get to see a whole world of other videos about the renovation of this property that I hope you will find useful. For now, folks, as per usual, Take care, look after one another, and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye!